Well, welcome everyone. My name is Lucille Rogers, and tonight um, we're honored that you're here this evening to participate in this momentous occasion. On behalf of our president, Mrs. Glenda Alfred Atkins, right here at the front table, and members of the Okaloosa County Democratic Black Caucus, we would like to welcome everyone to our first annual Black History Dinner. At this time, I would like to introduce our Master of Ceremony for the evening, Mr. Tom Gossam, Jr. Tom is a local resident of the Fort Walton Beach area. He's married to Councilwoman Dr. Joyce Gilly Gossam, and they have a son, Dixon. Tom played football for the Auburn Tigers and is the first black athlete to graduate from Auburn University. Among his many accomplishments, Mr. Gossam is an author, a consultant, and a well-known television and movie actor who performed roles in Drop Dead Diva and Fight Club, among others. We are pleased that he is able to join us this evening, and we're excited about his role as MC for this inaugural event. So please welcome Mr. Tom Gossam, Jr. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? Yeah. In the heat of the night, we was on two times a day. <laughs> and I was on both shows. Just letting y'all know. In case you didn't recognize me, I was real skinny, had a head full of black hair. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me here, and I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Uh, one of the things you learn in the acting business is that there are moments of your life that you can never recreate. Um, over the course of my career, I've probably worked in 13, 14, 15 different states. Uh, I've worked all across Canada. And generally what happens is a television day, film day, is, the average day is 14 hours. And so you're there a long time. Last I was working on a show in December over in South Carolina. I went in at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we would get off at 7 o'clock in the morning. But you have a lot of downtime, and so you get to sit, and you get to talk to people, and you get to know these people, and you always get to talk about your family and their family, and so on and so forth, and you always say you're going to get back together. Uh, and you generally don't, because that's not your world. Your world is back where you come from. But you appreciate that it's a moment that can never, ever, ever be recreated. This is such a moment. Anytime you do the first of anything, it's an incredible moment in your life. You can have another one of these next year, but it won't be this one. You could try to have another one tomorrow, and it won't be this one. This is a special occasion in our lives, and I appreciate you guys allowing me to share it with you. I'll tell you a quick story. Hollywood story about moments of your lives it involves Chris Rock, Morgan Freeman. I don't know if you guys saw the movie Nurse Betty, where they work together. What I'll tell you about Chris Rock is as an actor, he's a great comedian. But, uh, <laughs> come on now, come on, keep up with uh, they in this, they, they worked together for three months, got really, really close, promised that they were going to get back together, and they didn't, like most of us do. And about a couple of months after it was over, Chris Rock's grandfather died. And so they're having the funeral, and Chris Rock's sitting down there. He hears this big commotion in the back of the church. He turns. Morgan Freeman's walking down the aisle of the church. Chris Rock says, man, what a guy. What a guy. He comes down and shakes Chris Rock's hand, walks up in the pulpit, starts to deliver a eulogy for Chris Rock's grandfather that he didn't even know. Delivers this incredible eulogy. I mean, it's a performance. Comes down off the pulpit, shakes Chris Rock's hand, walks out of the church. <laughs> Two weeks later, Chris Rock said he got an envelope with an invoice in it for $200,000. <laughs> i tell you one thing. Uh, I was at Auburn University a couple of weeks ago. And Auburn, like most Southern universities, is commemorating 50 years of integration. January 4th, 1964, the first black student went to Auburn University. 
Most of the other Southern colleges commemorate 50 years of integration. I know that because I serve on the committee and I've seen the materials for Florida State, for Clemson, for Arkansas, for Ole Miss, Alabama, and most of the Southern universities. This is made possible primarily by the Democratic Party uh, and people who believed in freedom and who believed in civil rights. Tonight we're taking a first step. And Martin Luther King said, you take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You just take the first step. Tonight we're taking the first step. We've got a great program for you that will not only inspire you, but hopefully will enlighten you. So it should encourage all of us to continue to recognize the contributions of black Americans to the American way of life. So before we get started, I'd like to ask all of you, all of us, including myself, to please be respectful. Please turn off all your cell phones and other devices so that we will not interrupt the program. Thank you. I am going to introduce somebody who's incredibly special, who's going to sing our national anthem. Her name is Miss J.R. Lewis, and I'll tell you a little bit about J.R. She started singing at the age of four. She became an instant hit in her community and in the local area. She's being invited to ball games, churches, plays, malls, and festivals. At age six, she entered a regional music contest called Junior Facts, F-A-C-C-S, for the Florida Association of Christian Colleges and Schools. It was a scholarship-based music competition. She received a superior rating, making her one of the first six-year-olds to earn a rating that high. JR is currently the number one ranked junior fact solo vocalist in the state of Florida. She's now 12 years old and she attends Rocky Bayou Christian School and has held the highest academic average of a 99 GPA for seven years. She is one of the Emerald Coast premier young vocalists. She's warm and spunky, on-stage person, compliments her strong, rich, classic alto voice. Her single, Turn the Radio Up, encourage kids of America to never give up on their dreams. I present to you, J.R. Lewis, to sing the National Anthem. Oh, who see does that store spangle? 